on the top of the turf fields here. That's all heather. Underneath it there, that material, brown or black, that's turf or peas. This bog here now is known as a blanket bog. It's only about a metre, maybe a metre and a half deep to temporary to the sweetest girl I know. Goodbye, Piccadilly, farewell Leicester Square. It's a long, long way to temporary, but my heart lies there. That's a song, folks. It's over a hundred years old. The Allied soldiers sang that during World War I, and I believe the German army actually sang it as well. And you know something? I don't believe either of them knew where the hell Tipperary was. The very beginning. Films were made here with Laurel and Hardy. They were the first actors to come up and make films in these hills. The last big film that was made here was a film called Braveheart. It was a story, a Scottish story. And uh, it was filmed entirely here. Uh, this junction here now is known as the Sally Gap. Sally translated means willow. So there must have been a lot of willow trees grown here at some stage. This is all part of the Guinness estate. I'd like to introduce my traveling companions. Yes. Uh, yeah, awake. Okay, my name is Andy, and I'm in charge of itinerary planning. My brother Ronald is in charge of tech and taxi hailing. And beer. No, and no, beer. No, 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 Stacy, my niece, is in charge of having fun. And Lauren, my niece, is in charge of whining about lack of sleep and food. <laughs> However, from now on, you will be known as nose ring number one and nose ring number two. It's also called Lauren. I don't have one. Lauren. Lauren. Laryngitis. All right. Later. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, people. Crying cockles and muscles Alive, alive, oh. Well, that was originally a two-story building. And overhead is where the abbot stayed. And he had complete control over who came in here and who went. His name was Jock. We suspect he was a Scottish man with a name like that. And of course he had a good understanding of commerce. So that suited him down to the ground. And of course anybody that had any loot, he took it. And he needed a place to store all that loot, and no better place than the Round Tower. To get in there you had to climb a ladder, 
you went in through the door, you pulled the ladder in after you, and then you closed the door. You were as safe as a house on fire then. Because who was outside? Only the Vikings. And all they had at that stage was sticks and stones. And when they got tired throwing stones at that building, they went home, the Irish came out, and everybody lived happily ever after. Right. Now it's three metres to the hall door, it's 30 metres to the top of the tower. And there's five apartments in the pillar. <coughs> and there's a narrow window on each floor. But the narrow window is facing in a different direction on each floor, so they could survey the whole area right around. And above that then there's a square window. Now there's one of those on every corner up there. This is a round building now. And above that then we have the cone. Now the cone got damaged by lightning in 1678. And we had to go up and repair it. And while we were up there, we put a lightning conductor, a television area, and Wi-Fi, so we won't have to go up there again. What it is is three letters, I-H-S, which means I have suffered. It's a religious thing. And the centerpiece in the inside one there is the Lamb of God. Now, folks, this is the round tower. This tower here is standing over 800 years. And it was built by hand, because back in those years there was no such thing as high-rise cranes or JCBs or machinery of that nature. The only bit of help that they secured was probably scaffolding. Scaffolding now is a, a timber frame around the building, and you just you got the rock, you lifted it up and put it on the platform, then you had to get up on the platform and lift it again to the next level and you just kept going and going and going and eventually you got to the top. It's much wider, much longer than any other building in this guy. And I like that word recycle. They recycled the stone from the original church. The stone from the building was there's 800 years of monks and abbots buried in here. And when you're going out through the door there, the children said so. From the real end wall, so now on the side entrance collapsed. The answer for that is the archway over the door. The archway over the door spreads the nature of the wall. The side entrance there is a flat rock and it collapsed. I'm going to embarrass a man. He's taking all the pictures here now. Yes. And he looks like John McCree. And I write down my name. What do I look like? John McLean. John McLean. Ah. Do you know him? Bye bye, Miss yeah. American Pie. Bye bye, Miss American Pie. You're not going to be here for the whole day on the <laughs> 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 I wish I had his royalties, though. Yes. <laughs> so do we. Let it work, the love of his child. Pick it up, pick it whiskey and rock. Singing, this will be the day that I die. This will be the day that I die. Wow. <laughs> That tall lump of stone that's sticking up there, that's actually a cross there. But anyway, it's alleged that that's where St. Kevin is buried. Now, we cannot carry out an archaeological dig here until three years after the last person is buried here. And two more people have the rights to be buried here. One is a griffin and one is a bird. Now, both of them are in their ages. They won't do long more anyway. And we'll have them buried. And three years from then, we can carry out an archaeological dig. And then we'll find out whether St. Kevin is there or not. Now, I don't see anything wrong with getting two shovels and a pick, and we'll find out this evening, but the archaeology crowd don't take too kindly to my suggestion. <laughs> but anyway, we have to leave it at that. Bye. St. Kevin's kitchen. Now, it never was a kitchen. But the locals here, when they saw the bell tower, they said it looked more like a kitchen than a bell tower. And they christened it St. Kevin's Kitchen, and of course, like most, it's stuck. Really? <laughs> 
This is the lake in Glendalock. We just saw the monastery. There's a little greenery. Now we know what Ireland's called the Emerald Isle. It rains a lot, but it's also quite green. Beautiful.